In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm using home automation helpers to improve and enhance my automations. From doing things like being able to give your dashboard users the ability to enable and disable their own automations, grouping things like motion sensors and presence sensors to give you the ultimate lighting experience for home automation and then providing your home automation dashboard users with the ability to set their own alarms for things like wake up calls in the morning and opening and closing blinds and then finally a section on how I'm using buttons so your home automation dashboard users can initiate their own automations at the click of a button. I'm Paul, welcome to Project Smart Home. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. So what I'll do now is take you through the different chapters of the video. So if there's a particular area that you want to have a look at, then please feel free to jump ahead using the, chan the chapter sections in the description below. So I'm going to start off by giving you a giving you an overview of what a home assistant helper is, and then I'm going to talk about four home assistant helpers that I use in a lot of my uh, automations. The first one being the toggle helper, and I use that to uh, toggle off or enable and disable various automations, uh, alarms, and even my robot vacuum cleaning automations. The second helper I'm going to cover is the group helper and I'll show you how I'm grouping different types of devices and entities in Home Assistant such as lights, um, different types, different combinations of device types, uh, how I'm using grouping of motion detectors and presence sensors to come up with some really cool uh, automations for lighting and then how I'm using grouping for external doors. So grouping all of my external doors together for automations to know when I've left things open and shut. The next one is the date and or time helper. So how I'm using that for wake up routines, um, setting the alarm to go off and organizing the automation to open my window blinds at particular times of day. And then last, the last help I'm going to show you is the button helper. And I've started using this fairly recently as I've introduced my Roborock S7 vacuum cleaner. So I've now got buttons on my dashboard to initiate a cleaning routine around the house. So as I say, please feel free to jump ahead to any of the sections that you're more interested, interested in. So what are helpers in Home Assistant? So I guess the name, the clues in the name really, it's, it's a way to help you improve and create better automation. So you can, for example, uh, add buttons to your dashboards that will trigger automations. You can group devices in your Home Assistant environment together that you can then run automations against. You can set a time of day or allow a person to input a particular time of day into Home Assistant to trigger an automation at a particular time. And then the toggles, which is um, one of the areas that I'm going to cover is you can use to enable or disable automations, for example. I haven't used all of these. There's probably lots of explanations of what all these different helpers do. But in my mind, these are a way to help improve and sim maybe simplify some of your automations. What I'll show you first then is where the helpers are configured in Home Assistant. So from the main Home Assistant screen, we can go into settings and then devices and services, integration, devices, entities and helpers. And then across the top here, select helpers and these are all the helpers that I have configured and set up in my live home assistant environment. So today I'm going to focus on toggles and groups and buttons and date and time helpers 
So I'll go through how I'm using those different type of helpers in my setup and my environment. If you do want to add help, additional helpers, then it's simply from the helper screen, click on helper and select the helper that you need. Lots of different options there. I haven't used them all. The main helpers that I've used are the ones that I've um, just mentioned previously, and I'll show you how I'm leveraging those in my automation shortly. The first home automation helper that I'll show you then is the toggle helper and I'll show you how I'm using that in my automation. So I'll use my master bedroom as an example. So this is my main um, dashboard and um, I don't tend to use it on a PC that's why it may look a little bit odd, I tend to use it on mobile devices. But if we're going to master bedroom and we scroll down to some of the information we've got here. You can see here I've got a toggle for master bedroom automation. So at the moment that's on. So at the moment, if any automation tries to execute in that bedroom, such as the lights turning on, we'll check to see if that toggle switch is on. If it is, then that home automation in the master bedroom will be allowed to execute. So I'll show you the automation itself and how I'm making use of that. So if we go into automations, master bedroom, and I pick on turning the lights on. So the first condition, so the, tr the trigger for the automation is the, is the motion sensor, but the conditions that I've got here is that this toggle helper has to be on as well and if it is then the automation can continue to execute now the reason I've added these in is there's been certain times where I've just wanted to disable uh, a particular automation maybe someone's gone to bed early or they're not feeling very well so I just want all the automations to be disabled in that room something out of the ordinary has happened I just want to turn off automations and just by toggling that toggle switch it just disables them so it's a nice easy way to do that so it's been really useful so if we look into it in a bit more detail then so it's the master bedroom automation so basically looking for that toggle helper and checking that the state of it is on if it's on then we'll continue through to the rest of the conditions and if they're all met then we'll turn the bedroom light on. The way that you would create that helper is going into settings, devices, services, integrations, devices, entities and helpers into the helpers option at the top and then you can create a toggle helper here, put a name, choose an icon, press create. I'm not going to do that now, but if I, for example, if I show you my master bedroom automations toggle, it's basically just an on off switch. Pretty straightforward to configure, then you can leverage that. Another example then of where I'm using the toggle switch in my automations is for my alarm. So if I go back to the master bedroom again, and you may have noticed this earlier, I've got an on off toggle for my weekday alarm. So at the moment that's turned on. So every weekday at 8 a.m. that my alarm will be triggered. So if I show you in the automation itself how that's being used, automations and then master bedroom weekday alarm so I'll show you the input helper for time later but for the toggle switch again that toggle needs to be on for this automation to execute so it's a nice easy way in the dashboard that 
anybody in the family can enable or disable their alarms. So we're obviously looking at the master bedroom here, but if we go to any bed, any other bedroom in the house, we have the same capability. So people can switch on and off their alarms. I'd like to enhance this automation to add days of the week into the interface as well, but this is, this is where it's at at the moment. So again, it's just checking for the state to make sure that that is on for that um, automation to execute. The last example that I'll give you then of where I'm using the toggle switch is for my vacuum cleaning, my automated vacuum cleaning using my Roborock S7. So my vacuum cleaner is actually located in the dining room. So that's where I've got the automation set up. So you can see here, we've got a toggle switch for um, enabling or disa disabling cleaning automations. So that's set on at the moment. So any of my automated cleaning will take place at the moment and any of these buttons will run at the moment as well. But if I was to turn that off, then if somebody was to go, come along and click one of the buttons to vacuum the master bedroom or the living room or any of the kids' rooms, then that automation wouldn't work because uh, vacuuming has been disabled. So if I show you within the automation itself how that works, probably starting to get a feel for this now. Again, using conditions. So if we look at the master bedroom again. So the trigger is when somebody presses the button on the dashboard to clean the master bedroom, it checks to make sure that the automation toggle switch is enabled, which it is. So therefore it can then go off and execute the cleaning cycle. The next helper that I want to take you through is the groups helper. One of the examples that I'm going to give you to start off with is a fairly basic example of how I'm grouping lights together. So if we have a look at the helpers and if I show you my breakfast bar, for example, lights. So I've got a zone in the kitchen area that's for the breakfast bar lights and there's three lights that I've grouped together there in the kitchen which is breakfast bar light one two and three so then the way that we're using those automations where that I'm using that in the automation then is just being able to detect motion and presence in the kitchen and then switch on the breakfast bar lights as a group of lights. So that's a fairly basic example of how we're using groups. Another example is then how I'm using groups is to group everything together. So you'll notice on my main dashboard, I've got this button to switch off everything. So if I'm leaving the house and I know that nobody else is at home, I can click that button and it'll switch off everything in the house. And the way that I've done that is by using groups. So going to helpers and then if I find lights, so all house lights I've put into this group. So if we go into the group itself, group options, I can see all of my house lights listed here. So I can basically then leverage that group in an automation to switch everything off. So if I show you on my main dashboard, I'll go into edit the dashboard, switch off everything. There's a button there. If I click on that button, it will then switch off everything. So if I show you the automation that's behind that. So 
So when the state of that button changes, it'll use the groups, all house switches and all house lights to switch everything off. So you saw the all house lights, so that's the light bulbs, and then these are some of the smart switches that I've got there. So essentially that's how I'm using groups to be able to switch off everything in the house as well. So another way of using groups is grouping different entity types together, which I think is probably a um, slightly more exciting use of groups. So I'll show you how I'm using that now for motion and presence detection. So in my, well, in various rooms in the house, but I'll use the example of the playroom. So in the playroom, I've got this presence group. And this presence group is made up of a presence sensor and a motion sensor. So the motion sensor is a hue motion sensor and the present sensor is an Akara FP1. So I've grouped these two devices together to give me a combined motion and presence sensor capability. So a thing to note here is that under options it says if all entities is enabled the group state is on only if all members are on. So I haven't selected that. So if this group detects either motion or presence, the overall state of that group is on. It's not waiting for everything to be activated. So that, that's how I want it to operate. So the nice thing about this is detecting motion and it's detecting presence as well. So the way that I'm using that is just uh, in a, 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 a lighting automation. So I'll give you an example of that now. So if we come out of here and go into automations and play room. So using the playroom as an example, if I show you when the lights are switched on, I'm actually just using the motion sensor to do that, to detect motion. So the lights will come on as soon as motion is detected. But for switching off the lights, I'm actually using my presence group that I just showed you. So it may be that the motion sensor stops detecting motion in the playroom because when someone's just sat watching TV or being very still, the presence sensor will still detect their presence. So that's why it's important to use this group for switching off the light because I, I want it to stay on if somebody's obviously present in the room. Another example of grouping entities together then is for grouping my door contact sensors. So if I show you the group that I've got for that, and I use this uh, in an automation. So if we've left a door open late at night, then we'll get a notification to tell us. So external doors and windows, I've only got the doors in there at the moment. But for group options, I've got the front door, the back door, and the bifold doors at the back of the house. So they are grouped together. And again, I'm using, I'm not using all entities. So if any one of these is left open, I will get the notification and the status for that group will be on based on one being open. So you need to think about that when you're creating your groups, how you want them to function. So with regard to the automation, let's have a look at that. So external. Doors left open after 9 p.m. So when the time's equal to nine o'clock and the condition is 
that that external doors and windows group is on. So if any one of those three door contact center sensors is open, then this, the status of this will be on. All the doors are closed at the moment, so this wouldn't execute. And I've just got it um, sending a notification to mine and my wife's phone at the moment. You could obviously integrate voice integration, have a voice message announced, but as this is particularly late at night, we didn't want it waking up the whole house, so this seems to work just fine like this. The next helper that I'd like to talk to you about is the date and time helper. So I will use the master bedroom again as the example. So if I scroll down to my master bedroom information, you can see the time helper here, how it's been surfaced into the dashboard. So basically the person using this dashboard can type in at the time that they want to wake up in the morning, on the weekday morning. And as long as that toggle is on, that automation will execute. So I'll show you that now. I'll show you the automation now. So if I go into alarm and master bedroom weekday alarm. So the trigger is based on the master bedroom input. So as I say, I've surf surfaced up that timer into the master bedroom on the dashboard and the time that's inputted into that helper will be used to execute this automation. So eight o'clock on a weekday morning based on this condition on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday as long as the automation toggle is on, then I will get a message in the morning saying it's time to wake up and the radio will play. So the way that that information is surfaced up into the dashboard, if I go back onto the master bedroom and edit the dashboard, can see in here I've got the master bedroom input time helper that's been surfaced up where we can put the time in. I'll give you an example now how I've built on that alarm date time helper in my son's bedroom so if i show you in here he's got the same options available to him so he can turn on and off the alarm and set the time but the difference in this room is that jack also has a window blind so whichever time jack sets to wake up in the morning the alarm will go off but in parallel to that the window blinds will open at the same time again. So by using one date time input helper, he's been woken up by the alarm and his blinds have been, work, uh, been opened up as well to help him wake up in the morning. And the way that that looks from an automation point of view is if I go into window blind, using the <clears throat> using the uh, input timer date and time so it's set for say 7 a.m. as we just saw in the dashboard so it's 7 a.m. on a weekday and the weekdays are set based in the uh, condition Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday um, and assuming Jack's automations are on then Jack's window blind will be open 50% at 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I guess an, an additional thing to, to point out here is that what I've also got is an additional toggle helper here. 
and this is for when the kids are off school. So it may be that I don't want this to execute when the kids are off school because they'll kind of wake up a little bit later and open the blinds when they're ready. So I've got an additional toggle helper here which is actually turned off at the moment so this this uh, automation wouldn't execute. So there are different tiers of automation so Jack can disable the automations in his room just with that toggle switch, this toggle switch and then there's an overriding toggle switch for when all of the kids are off school so none of the school related automations will run and then also there are ways that we can turn off other automations as well with other toggle switches. So the last Home Assistant helper example that I want to give you is the button helper. And I did touch upon this earlier in the video, but I'll give you another example now of how I'm using buttons. So if I go into my dining room, um, we've got these buttons here, the master bedroom, living room, kids' bedrooms, kitchen dining room, and various other rooms. So what these buttons do is they um, kick off a vacuum cleaner process. So I'll show you quickly the dashboard that's behind it. Uh, go to this one, and then essentially you've got the the buttons that are being surfaced up into the dashboard. And when those buttons are being clicked, I'll show you an example automation. Clean. So we'll show you the kitchen and dining room. So when that button is clicked and the state changes then assuming that the other helper toggle switch is on so we we are allowing vacuuming to take place using the state of that helper the vacuuming cleaning process will execute. So based on the click of a button, or actually in this automation I've got when it's 8.30 8 in the evening, um, then this automation will actually clean the kitchen and dining room area. Thanks for watching the video today everyone. I appreciate your time. It'd be great to get some feedback on what you think of the automations and my use of helpers. If you've got any other cool ideas you'd like to share, that'd be great. Um, thanks for your time again and uh, hopefully catch you on a video soon. Thanks, bye.